from Sam Adams. It's just not a little sour, it's cosmic sour. Hey, it's Brain Muffin back with a brain, a brain review, a beer review. And here we have Sam, Sam Adams. We got the Sam Adams bottle, we got the Sam Adams glass. This is Cosmic Sour Limited Release, Tart and Wild. Now, this is 4.6%. I only have two check ins by my friends on Untapped. So, this is pretty new beer. Now, this is what was interesting. Now, I, I don't know if it'll say on here, but my understanding, at least it used to be, and you got the independent brew. There you go, Greg. Yeah, I know you don't like Jim, but there you go, there you go, there you go. Still independently owned. How about your buddies over there at New Belgium, huh, huh, huh? Still think Jim's a jerk now? I think he is a jerk, but that's okay. Um, my understanding is all the sours are made in Cincinnati. At least that's the way it used to be. I don't know if it's still true. But this is what I found interesting on the back of the bottle. Who's got the funk? We got, that's what I was singing before. This beer is blended with a funky Belgian ale called Cosmic Mother Funk. KMF, and that's trademarked, registered trademark, a nickel to Jim, that is spontaneously fermented and aged for two years in, in Hungarian oak fodders, I guess, fodders, fruiters. Wild yeast and the barrel contribute a unique fruity and tart character. So it's aged for two years. That is interesting. So, especially considering it's a 4.6 beer. Now it's blended. Um, so what I'm wondering if KMF is actually high in alcohol. Now, several years ago at Jungle Gyms, they had, it was one of their last ones, I think, they had a, a beer tasting with from, um, from Sam Adams, and they had some of these sour beers that they were starting to come out with, oh, at the time. And they, what was weird is they were okay, and then they had the, the sour base. In other words, they used this sour base, and then they blend it with other things. And, uh, of course, my friends in the table I'm at, we're like, can we try it, can we try it, can we try it? And, and the lady running it could not believe we wanted to try it. And we're like, can you bottle this? It was great. It was high in alcohol, too. Uh, so this is uh, best before February, I'm going to guess, of 2000, uh, 2020. It has no year on it. Um, I really hope it's not uh, February 2019. I don't remember where I got this. I think I got it at Jungle Gyms. I think it's where I got this. A lot of stuff goes to Jungle Gyms first. Like their Oktoberfest goes to Jungle Gyms. And some stuff goes there before it goes anywhere else in the country. So we have a very nice kind of orangey color. Um, lots of neat, nice fizz. Oh, wonderful sour. Almost like cherry notes. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I don't care what you doggy think. It's going to be good. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, there's hints of vanilla that kind of float around from the oak. Oh, and it finishes nice. And this is still a little on the cold side. So I imagine this warms up and opens up a little bit. Now, you wouldn't want this to get too warm because it'd get really sour. But. Oh, it's almost like a hint of golden fruit. I want to say peach. I do get hints of cherry on the back end. That's going to be from the oak too, but there's this nice sourness, hints of, since it's Belgian too, it's going to come from the yeast. And the nice malt backbone. This is a beautiful sour beer. It's not overly tart. It's American wild ale, they call it. Man, it's good. So what are my friends? What's the average? I didn't I didn't even look. 3.6, yeah. Most a lot of my the people that I drink with nowadays, they don't like the sour beer. Some of them do. Hmm. This would go well from a mild to a pungent cheese. This would go well with, with several different things to eat. Some savory meats. Um dark. You could Definitely have this with some smoky barbecue. Um, man, you could play well even with sour, like kimchi. You could, you know, if you like, if you're into the sour and tart, uh, you could have this with a, a very tart dessert. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go like key lime pie, but if you had, say, a, char, a, a tart cherry um, or maybe a peach based um, dessert of some sort. Because you can even go sweet on that side. Just don't go too sweet because then it's going to be really, well, unless you want the contrast. 
really sweet and then it'll be sour. Man, this is a this is one of the better sours I've ever had. For this, for a low um, grab beer. But uh, that's good. I think it's a solid four. My friends gave it a 3.65 average. But I think it's a solid four. Especially as it opens up a little bit more. I mean, I was thinking 3.75, but I think this thing, and it pairs, it's going to pair well. Being lower in alcohol and not being overly tart and overly sour, it's going to pair well with a lot of foods. So I, to me, that gives it a four. So there you go, 4.0 out of 5 is what I do. I got a hop down level 73 badge for that. Surprising any sour badges, but I probably have some out there. But that is quite good. Um, you definitely wouldn't want to sit down and drink a six pack of this, but uh, it has some nice mild notes of sourness, and it's a bit of refreshing. My mouth's watering from it, and um, yeah. So what would you pair that with? I mean, I, you know what? Smoked salmon with capers mm. and kimchi. That's what I'd have. So let me know in the comments below what you think of 4 out of 5. you think it's good, not good? If you like sour beers, hate sour beers, think they're disgusting, think they're the best thing ever made, let's have a discussion. Thank you very much, and we'll see you. Goodbye. What? That is bizarre. Can't wait. This is gonna be either great or crap. There's, I don't think there's any in between.